morning, everyone. It is Monday night. That is not meant to be there, so let's see if we can get that to fuck. I actually, that is unbelievable. How are you doing? It's uh, Billy Kirk. Good here. I hope you're well, everyone. Uh, before we kick things off, we've got an absolutely brilliant guest. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, going to say hello to some people in the comments before we get uh, rock and roll. We've got the wonderful Miles Cooper from uh, uh, Riders Creed. He's going to be with us in just a couple of minutes. I know he's standing by. So first of all, before we kick things off, uh, let's say hello to a couple of people. We've got Rob Worthing, Andy Finnegan, uh, let's see, Colin Fury, uh, Dave Mackay, and a whole bunch of others. So say hello to us in the comments. Let us know you're watching tonight. Let us know where you're watching tonight. Uh, we've got some, we're looking to get some questions in. So if you do have any questions, hit us up to the comments. I'm going to try and get to as many as we can tonight. And don't forget to make sure to check out everything that's going on at uh, broadbeardoils.com. All the information is out there about all the new products and stuff that's coming on. But we bring this to you each and every Monday night for absolutely. Hee-haw. Am I allowed to swear? I'm not too sure. I tend to, I think I've already sworn. So fuck it. Let's get into it. It's Monday night. What are we going to do? Uh, I've got a very special guest, right? Loads of people saying Hi, Elaine. Uh, uh, Mrs. Bra is watching. Uh, what's it got? Kenneth Grant Inslee? Ainsley? Am I pronouncing that right? I've never seen that word written down, so I'd like to apologise. Uh, let's see, William, Andrew, my mind. Right, so we've got quite a little audience together. We've got about eight people watching. Let's rock and roll, shall we? Our very special guest uh, is from uh, Riders Creed. Now, first of all, they have already blown people away when they played the Broadway or Mustache Championships. So we're delighted he's going to join us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up uh, for Mr. Miles Cooper. Good evening, Miles. How are you? Hey, how we doing? <laughs> not too bad, man. Not too bad. Uh, I just, I, I didn't want to come to you too soon because I saw you were taking a couple of cheeky swigs there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's it? Uh, what can I ask before we kick off? What are you drinking? Sadly, it's just water. Me and all, buddy. Me and all. Yeah, it's, Cheers. it's not rock Cheers. and roll today. No, no, definitely. It's a Monday night. It's a Monday night. <laughs> uh, I guess, I guess, rock never sleeps. Now, uh, looking at where you are, man, are you? Uh, you're in the the your little studio at home. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, my little, my little studio at home. It's where we uh, start the demo process. <laughs> yeah, well, you were just saying, I mean, you guys have been really busy because it was me, I think, the, the new album came out. Is yeah, that right? Yeah, I think it got released in May, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, new, yeah it was a bit, got released during lockdown. <laughs> yeah, you must be the only people that I think have actually done that. And saying that, they, how, how is the album done? Has it done well? Yeah, on... Uh, the, the, the first few weeks of uh, album release, it went really well, to be fair. Brilliant. Um, kind of shocked. <laughs> but, but um, I guess nobody's going anywhere. Do you know yeah, what I mean? true. <laughs> no one's going anywhere except out for their long brisk walks twice a day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> how has lockdown been for you, though, man? I mean, obviously, you've been busy. You're not out doing live gigs. But how has lockdown yeah. been for you in general? It hasn't been too bad, to be fair. Right. Um, here and there, but it's it's been good for getting back on the music writing, yeah. Uh, getting back composing and stuff because uh, we got plenty of time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's one good thing. Well, you you didn't want to give anything away, but you kind of before we kicked off, you sort of said, "Well, st maybe starting to think about you know maybe starting to think about a third album." Yeah, yeah, definitely. We need wow. we need to start this process quick. And early, oh. man. There's many somebody, ideas. Loads of people struggle to get to the second album, and you guys are already going straight to the third. This is not going badly at all. <laughs> yeah. uh, but say that, like you say, loads, loads of people listening along. Now, before we kick off, just one second, Miles. Uh, if you do have any questions, here's what to do: hit us up in the comments. And even if you've just got any comments or anything you want to say, please feel free. Because the more you interact the more we get to do these. And that's exactly what we're all about here tonight. And the whole thing is, Broadbeard is all about positivity. We're here having a bit of fun uh, on a Monday night just to take the strain off the weekend. Because if you're like me and you've got kids, you haven't relaxed for a fucking second. Um, <laughs> sorry, Miles, it's a hard time. We've got a hot tub I didn't want. I've no idea. Didn't want one. Never wanted a hot, never wanted a hot tub in my life. It's uh, fucking ridiculous. Now, um, we've got to kick things off. First of all, um, we've got a bit of an exciting announcement to make. Um, would you like to do the honours? Uh, yeah, I can do. Please so, do so. Um, next year, we're going to be playing the uh, the Broadbeards Championships again. Get in! Time. Get in! you got to be excited, because I mean, you guys got one hell of an amazing reception and a br brilliant feedback the last time you played. So you excited yeah. to come back? Oh, massively. To, to be honest, when we played, uh, like, just gone, 
Um, I think that was our first gig as a four piece. Yeah. And uh, quite nervous for that one, but it okay. seemed to go really well. No, 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 dead, dead, dead. Uh, loads of people asking. Sorry, Kenneth's just uh, popped in with a question. Kenneth, is the album on Spotify? Yes, it is. Uh, yes, it I can is. assure you that. That's what I'm listening to it. You can also follow to make sure you can hear all the things because there's a very good chance that by the time we finish this podcast tonight, these guys will have pumped out a third album because uh, they <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't see the most about it. But yeah, the album is available on Spotify and I think it's available to purchase on iTunes as well. I think that's right. Yeah, we're everywhere, to be honest. Um, yeah. We've got a website as well where you can buy the physicals from and all the merchandise. So, uh, uh, are yeah. You, are you guys doing vinyl by any chance? I know that's a silly, mad question mm, to ask. Not yet. There is a, there is plan to do it. Um, well, I want to do it anyway. <laughs> all right, okay. Well, that's fair enough. You know, there's some like... Uh, I used to be really pessimistic about hearing bands on vinyl and they like literally... A couple of years ago, I got I like, I don't, I don't know, there's something very special about it. There's something very yeah. special about it. Anyone listening is going to be like, listen to this old fart, talking yeah, about vinyl record. You can't beat vinyl, mate. You can't, you can't beat it. You can't beat vinyl. You can't get vinyl. Right. Uh, let's get in about it, first of all. We've got loads of questions coming in. Keep them coming. Uh, we'll, kick, we'll kick this off, man. Um, um, uh, before we get to the Rider's Creed, where does your interest in music kick off? What was it like? Was it something you got into growing up? Uh, was it something in your teenage years? Uh, how did your interest in, in, in music sort of grow? How did it kick off? Yeah, so basically for me, it all started in uh, secondary school. Right. Um, listening to my dad's tunes, because he's always playing like, he was playing Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, and all of that. And I'm like, okay, kind of like this. All right. Um, but I got into piano quite early um, and start, started all of that. Yeah. And then I think it was the last year of school or maybe the year before, I was right. like, uh, I'm just going to give guitar a go. I nice. kind of want to try it and uh, been playing ever since. So was dad's choice of music? Because like when you said listening to my dad's songs, I immediately yeah. thought about some of the things my dad would listen to, which would be yeah. the most Scottish music <laughs> you could ever listen to in your life. Like if it wasn't covered in tartan, he wasn't interested. No. So originally I was like, oh no. But then hearing, of course, what you guys do and as part of your music, did you draw influences yourself from the likes of Led Zeppelin and you mentioned Pink Floyd there? Yeah, massively. Um, yeah. Def definitely Pink Floyd. Like uh, David Gilmour is one of my inspirations as a guitarist. Cause, of course. Yeah, I just love the guy. I think he's brilliant. If, if he can hold the attention of 80,000 people in a stadium yeah. doing a guitar solo, uh, if if you get if anyone watching this has never looked up some of Dave Gilmour's uh, uh, girls live, if you've never yeah. actually seen like his solo shows live, they are incredible uh, they're absolutely incredible um so we get we're we're in secondary school we start doing guitar we're getting ready to move on uh to was it was it college or uni or did you just hit the road uh i, I went straight into college afterwards after oh, I mean, uh doing you... um like a sound design course okay uh sound technology that's handy yeah it was qu quite good but uh didn't really get me where <laughs> Didn't get anywhere <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, but were you were you starting to get into bands around about that time? Uh, it was school. <laughs> right, right. I got into my first band with the bass player. What's the name? What's the name of the uh, band? Right, th this name is super, like it is really embarrassing. Yes. It's pretty good though. It's a good name. It's, okay. Uh, we were called Unique Destruction. Oh, I like it. I like <laughs> yeah. it. It sounds like a it sounds like a wrestling tag team from the nineties. I love yeah, it. it. I, I love it. I love it. Uh, and uh, what was their kind? Of, what was uh, what was their what was their deal? What was their kind of? Uh, if you were to pattern them after a band, what was uh, Unique Destructions all about? Um, it, we're a bit of everything, to be fair. Nice. <laughs> um, we're mainly classic rock, but then sometimes we'd do some hard rock stuff, and okay, it just wasn't very good. <laughs> oh, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Uh, where, do you, did you guys do any live gigs? Yeah, um, we did uh, a few college uh, school gigs, so playing oh. in front of the school kids and stuff. Nice. Um, but we did, I still think to this day, it's probably the best gig I've ever played. 
There's a oh, wow. tiny little pub in Birmingham uh, right. called the Old Wharf. And it was tiny. It was literally like a shoebox. And we were playing to our parents and the uh, people on the bar staff. And that Aww. was it. <laughs> I like eggs like that. I like eggs like that. I've uh, never been so nervous. <laughs> man. Uh, but so we've we finished up with the uh, you, you Need Destruction. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, is there any other bands on the road or, uh, to uh, Riders Creek? Or what, what did you do once you, you mentioned you went to, to college? Did sound yeah. engineering, is that right? Or sound design? Yeah, yeah. Lot of, mainly sound engineering. That's what it was based on. But um, we did loads of other things in there, like um, uh, recording in as well. And right. there's loads of little bits. So what was the plan? Was the plan for you to go uh, sort of behind the scenes in the studio? Or did you still have designs like, I'm, I'm enjoying myself on guitar. I'm enjoying things with Unique Destruction. I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, um, I, like, did you have any plans on what you were going to do next? Yeah, I, I've wanted to be a live sound engineer that that right. was my passion or, or going anything towards um uh, light and video mm -hmm. uh, and pyro stuff I, I love all that stuff um but sadly after college nothing took off <clears throat> right. that much yeah yeah it was a couple of years later i went um joined a crewing company in liverpool right. and worked at the echo arena so that was good. <laughs> uh, so when did when did when does Riders Creek come about? Um, literally like three years ago. <laughs> All right, okay. So uh, but, talk, talk us through the process then. So there's a zone where you think I'm not going into live performance, or did you just start getting that edge? We went, oh, I want a band. How how did how did the band come to fruition? I guess we should say. Well, me um, we. I was in an, uh, another band called Black Rose Cadillac at the that time. That is a cool name. That yeah, is a cool name. It was all right, to be fair. Um, and we were looking for a bassist. And I happened to know Rich, who was my best friend at school. So I was like, okay, we'll grab him. Uh, so he came into Black Rose Cadillac. And then uh, we got Ryan in as well on, right. on vocals. But then it kind of all went south with Black Rose. and. Uh, we formed Riders, uh, Riders Creed in about a week of our first gig. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, so was, what came first, the, the gig or you guys getting together? Literally, we got together and then a week later we had a gig. Holy crap. Holy crap. Do you remember, <laughs> what, the gig, do you remember what the gig was? Yeah, it was at um, Route 44 in Birmingham supporting Stone Broken. All right, okay. And was it was just a regular Friday night or Saturday night or... Wednesday yeah, night or just a regular Saturday night. Nice. Yeah. So what was it? Did you think, you know, uh, cause I mean, listening to the, the sound you guys, I'd say, um, I mean, I, I, I quite like a uh, headspace. That's my favorite song. Um, nice. but, um, um, was it like a case of there's a, there's a connection here. I feel like this is something, this isn't like uh, just a fly by night thing. It's like, there's definitely something here. Yeah. Yeah. When, uh, when we formed Rogers Creed, it, we all just seemed to click. Um, yeah. We all knew what we wanted uh, and how, how we wanted to go around it. Um, we were all into the same kind of music as well. And so it just, it just really clicked. Hmm. And, and you guys did, I take it then, cause you said like, you know, uh, he's a friend of a friend, and blah 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 blah. You knew you guys had like chemistry because it's one of the hardest things, man. I mean, you've a, you've obviously been in bands before, and you've been around bands. Keeping that chemistry and keeping that flow on yeah. and off the stage is is like it's one of the biggest things. Yeah. Um. For 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 me and the bassist, we're like we've been mates for years, and yeah, like the last few years, we've been working together and stuff like that outside the band, and so um. We're all pretty good with our relationship wise within the band. It's uh, we never have massive fallouts yet. <laughs> well, well, I'm sure it's, I'm sure I'm sure it's all gonna work out fine. I feel like I'm your dad now. I'm sure everything's gonna be fine, son. <laughs> yeah. uh, just, just you sticking at it, dad's pretty. Yeah. Uh, um, but that, but that's the thing, like so um 
you you formed a band and one of the hardest things to do is literally get in the studio and start getting the music out there i know that that can be that can be really intimidating to make the difference between you know yeah. being tracks that kick about someone's hard drive to actually creating something and getting it out there is that was that the was that the plan for you guys or we went we're just going to be a live band and see how this goes no we, as soon as we started making music we were like we, we need an album we've got to right. get an album but it, it um within the first few months of um being riders creed we managed to win a competition uh, right. to get us label access okay so, yeah so you, that, you had to make the album but the label would put it out pr pretty much yeah it right, was a okay. two-year uh five-year two album record deal oh wow yeah uh so how did you go about what did you do did you book a studio yourself or did your expertise uh, that you'd learned in college that you thinking that didn't lead to something did that eventually come back and end up being handy not a chance <laughs> <laughs> in the in the demo process it does but uh yeah <laughs> not in the studio <laughs> in the download process in the demo <laughs> all right okay i thought you said the download is like oh my god he went to college and all he learned how to right click something yeah. <laughs> click download <laughs> <laughs> download boys that's me about for the day uh, yeah. uh, uh that's brilliant so um so what did you how did you just go about like trying to get this album who's doing the writing who's doing the heavy lifting or is it really collaborative because it sounds like you guys are already working really well together is it just yeah let just lock this in and, and do this yeah it's we all bring things to the table so um it's normally it'll start off with a riff idea right and then we'll bring it into the the, the practice room with all of us and we'll just keep working on it until we uh we eventually uh like it <laughs> Did, did you guys, I know that, that this will sound like an odd question to some people uh, watching, but did you guys get a nice sort of period of writing and rehearsal before you went in the studio or were you? did you feel you were under pressure because you said, we want to get this album out? Did you get a nice time to sort of a nice long period uh, of time to really work on it? Not really. No. <laughs> it was all massively rushed. Um, I think the label wanted, and uh, I think we signed in like October or something like that. And okay. uh, the, they wanted the album by Feb. Whoa. Uh, so, yeah, it was hard work but uh, and really stressful. And did, but we did, got it done. Did you get a fly to anywhere like a, a, a Greek island or anywhere <laughs> really? Did you get did you get put up in California? Or like where, where did you record the album? Uh, sadly, no. It's, <laughs> it's just down the road from me, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a lovely studio though and yeah. greg the producer is he's a wizard like some right. of the stuff that he does like, honestly but uh, yeah primary recording studios awesome right, let's, place. let's get a, um a couple of here well first of all we've got lots of people uh that are downloading your music just for the first time tonight uh no, just downloading it that's our boy peter Murphy. that's it clock them in uh peter loves this type of peter you are gonna i know for a fact you're gonna absolutely love this um so he's uh gonna check that out we have a uh, uh rob had said i was at the the probably on mustache championships but honest don't remember that much uh it sounds like rob was drunk so he's gonna definitely check you out on spotify uh, uh and, it, and it means that when you come back rob you'll get to hear them live and by yeah. then the boys are probably going to be in the fifth album by then. They don't. They don't muck about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and do you know some of these? Um, I know that there's two albums up there already. Kenneth's asking. Uh, the album is on Spotify. What is the name? So I think L Lost Souls is the first one. Is that right? Or L Lost Souls is the most recent one? Yeah, what Lost Souls is Lost Souls is the most recent. So what was the the name of album number one again? It was self titled Riders Creed. Ah, guy, there you go. Uh, because I thought I didn't know how to watch Spotify, so <laughs> I, can't, I can't find it. I can't find it, uh, but that's because I'm going on the wrong thing, like an asshole. Um, <laughs> but make sure to check out if you are going on to Spotify, and I always say this to everyone if you find an artist that you like or you're just discovering, make sure to hit that follow button. So you can yeah. actually check out everything that's on there. Make sure to check out the follow button because you never know what you're going to pick up uh, with, the, with the guys as well. Right, we've got a couple more um, uh, questions just re uh, coming up. Here's a really good one. This is by uh, Adam Carell, which is weird because I already know someone else called Adam Carell and it's not him. Um, yeah. 
We've got to come to the name. So you and Billy are chatting about names. Uh, I've wondered about this since I first saw you at the championship. It's a very unique name. Uh, where does the name Riders Creed come from? Well, it's uh, it's a bit of a, a difficult one. <laughs> okay. But um, in that during that week of when the band first got together, right? We uh, we needed a name, um, and obviously we couldn't use the one before and. So uh, we got together in uh, Richard's flat, his old flat, and okay. uh, just sat on the carpet for about six hours, just chucking names in this, like in the hat, pulling names right. out. <laughs> um, but we we knew we wanted to go some kind of uh, like nights of uh, nights of the round table, like tail kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, we figured out well. Ryan says this. I'm not too sure if it's true, <laughs> but apparently riders means uh, something to do with knights. Um, so I was like, okay. And Creed's got something to do with it as well. So we were like, that'll do. <laughs> there it is. All right. Yeah, do, you we'll remember, have it. do you remember any names that came close? Oh, uh, I can't. To no, I can't. Well, to be honest, no. Well, it sounds like you've gone the right way on that one. So uh, yeah. we won't worry about that too much. Uh, right, a couple of other uh, quick questions coming in. Um, all right, there we go. We've already got a new convert, Peter Murphy, playing in the background. Loving it so far. Nice. Out. Uh, let us know what album you're listening to, Peter, if you are listening to the brand new album or if you're listening to the older one. Uh, so uh, I've got to come to this, but we'll come back to the, the, um, the band in just a second. But what was your sort of involvement with Broadbeard? Because... Just before the show, I was sort of Googling away, trying to find some images and stuff like that. And uh, you're a hard man to find an image of. I'll, I'll say that for nothing. You're a hard yeah. man to find an image of. But especially <laughs> on your own. Uh, especially on your own. I think I found one if I'm lucky. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, one of the things that got me is, I at one point I was going, uh, I kept finding pictures of you without a beard. Right? I kept finding like a couple of pictures. And I was like, is that him? Like, I didn't want to turn around in case you were going to go, well, actually, we changed bassists back in. Oh, shit, <laughs> uh, um, so when, when when did we start? Um, we'll start with the beard. When did when did you start growing the beard? And and, and why, did I suggest? Yeah, I, th I think it was about five years ago. It's four or right. five years ago. Um, yeah. And I've, I've had loads of different beard shapes and stuff. Like I had the, the goatee and the chin strap and all that. And, I thought, you know what? I'm going to give growing the beard a go. Good. So, uh, yeah, just let it grow out. I've been trimming it now and again, like, but since lockdown, it's uh, just let the thing grow. <laughs> uh, is, it, is, it, is it something like, because uh, a lot of people don't really, I mean, I, I, I mean, I had a newfound for it when I grew my big beast not long ago, but um, people really don't appreciate how much work you've got to put in to make, that, to make oh, a beard look nice. Yeah, it's a nightmare. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 it's a weird thing because it's like because we're all about body positivity and what have you as well. You want to look nice, there's nothing wrong with that. But the number mm. of people that I go like, oh, you spend your time looking after your beard, it's attached to my face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's right there. You want it to look good. Um, so I, do you spend a lot of time with it? You said you've trimmed it. I think it looks a little trimmed from the last time I saw it. I think it looks longer, actually. It's definitely yeah, longer. It's, yeah, it's definitely longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was about here the last time. But, uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. But we never got that bad boy down there. And uh, um, <laughs> so, what, how did your involvement happen with Robbield? Um, well, to be honest, I'm not too sure how it happened, but I started using, I managed to find their products. I think it might have been for a, a Facebook ad or something like that. Uh, okay. A few years back. Because um, I was on the lookout for some decent oil. Right. <laughs> Because uh, some of the stuff that you use is uh, in the shops and it's, ugh, it's horrible. Some of the but, stuff um, in the supermarkets, first stuff I ever used was stuff I found in a supermarket and it was dreadful. Yeah. It, might, it might as well have been crisp and dry. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It was horrible stuff. Uh, yeah. so, you, so you found them. Um, yeah. Or you found the Broadway stuff. What was it about it that attracted you? Was it the sort of embracing sort of a sort of alternative look, really? Because it's not like... A, Packaged commercial kind of yeah yeah got a real well, sort of to it. It's because I, I I noticed the logo. It was the logo that I was like that. That's a that's a cool logo. That yeah we are there. Um, we are there. Yeah, 
the same. Well, the other one. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're all kidding now. And should I say, and John will be delighted, all this is available right now from probiodoils.com. You're very welcome. Yeah. Um, make sure to check that out. Um, so that's what I tried to do initially. So how was contact made between you and uh, John, for example? I, th I think uh, Ryan got in touch or... Uh... Uh, the drummer Gil, but I'm not too sure how it happened. But the okay. next thing you know, I found out we might have a gig, and I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> and it's it seems like the perfect gig for you guys. It's yeah. like because I mean, I I can only say this from talking about it from a comedy point of view, but you do gigs all the time, and sometimes you're like, "How on earth did we get booked for this?" You know, <laughs> you turn up. have you guys had to play any gigs like that? Any gigs where you went, "This was a bad booking." Uh, yeah, we, we, we've had a few. <laughs> yeah, we've definitely had a few. Um, that, that laugh uh, sounded like a memory that I've, I feel like I've just scratched there for a second. <laughs> you went up and we went, oh, we've had, we've had a few, we've had a few. Um, yeah. <laughs> The only reason I do it is because, like, uh, obviously, Brobeard is warmth and everyone's into it, and there's an attitude, and there's a real positive feel, real welcoming. What yeah. was an example of a bad show? Just so people can appreciate that when it comes to live performance, I don't think sometimes people get what actual performers and bands, especially, have to go through. Yeah, it's any, uh, any bad it's, ones for, for, for us, it's all about the um, the crowd. So when we get to gigs and we've got no crowd, <laughs> it's not exactly good for us. No, so we, no. we just use it as a practice. We've had, we've had a couple where we've had um, a couple of people in the crowd, but we play to them like we do 100 people, 1,000 people. You know, we, we, you've got to give it all. They've come to see us, so uh, we've got to give it them back. I went. I went to a snooker a gig at a snooker hall in Liverpool, where no one. Uh, there was four comedians on. No one had actually turned up to the gig, and the <laughs> owner of the bar made us do it to the annoyed-looking bar staff, <laughs> <laughs> who were just kind of like, "Could you cut it short so we can go home?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, I've got to test out these jokes for people that turn up. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's you're, you're just gonna have to cope with it. And if that promoter is watching, he never paid us for that gig in Hartlepool. Uh, right. Uh, oh, don't get me started. Don't get yeah, me started. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we all have to chase some scrupulous promoters. Uh, right. So um, you play the championships and it's a, it's a great reaction. Um, yeah. uh, how exactly does it go about? Because obviously you are pretty much, I don't want to say you're the poster boy, but you, you almost become a bra ambassador in your own way because, I mean, obviously you've got the beard, you've got the look, you're outperforming uh, along with all these things. How did you feel about that being becoming an almost like sort of ambassador, if you like? Oh, I love it, mate. To be honest, it, it's like I, I never actually thought it had happened. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Like when I started using the product, I was like, "Oh, I'd love to get involved with these guys." Yeah. Um, it's just because it is totally different to other beard companies, and yeah, like the the amount of stuff that John does, it's brilliant. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge part, and obviously there's the, the brotherhood. It's a big thing that like, people don't really get about how much this going on, and I think it helps us sort of embracing of it. Uh, like, I honestly think, mm. like, everyone turns up and they're a good mood, and I know, I can see through the comments, loads of people excited that you're going to be back joining us. Uh, I'm trying to find a really good one, but I seem to have lost it amongst them all. Sorry, someone <laughs> made an absolutely amazing comment, saying they were really, really excited that you guys were going to be back for the championship. Oh, Actually, I'm fighting it was Andy. Let me see if I can find Andy, 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 Andy. Andy, 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 boof! There we go. Uh, Andy, evening, brothers. Uh, good to see you. you got the best beard in the band tonight. Uh, was uh, you know, <laughs> mate. February thought Riders Creek were brilliant. Well, the good news is, mate, they're going to be back next February as well. So uh, make sure to check. I think it's February. It's February. I don't know why I'm yeah. saying that. I've already been booked for it. Sorry, John. Don't be gear friend. <laughs> uh, um, we'll bring you all the details about that because that's a little bit of an exclusive. So what's next? What we what we got next? I mean, obviously. We're in lockdown. Yeah. Um, what is the music you're listening to? Because I'm always interested. You talked about what your dad listens to, but what's the music you're listening to right now? Or are you particularly, I find in bands, you guys sort of ingest a little bit of everything. What are you yeah. enjoying? What is it you like in music? T to be honest, mate, I, I listen to everything. Like, uh, yeah. 
I listen to from blues to you know metal hardcore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit, a bit of everything. Um, anything loads that's, of playlists. <laughs> anything that's on the playlist right now, something you keep going back to. Maybe um, a hot tip for the rest of us. So the the main guys for me is Blackstone Cherry. Like yeah. these guys are just. Okay, there's such an inspiration to our, our music and like yeah. our genre in that uh, Rogers Creed. I uh, can't fault them. <laughs> we just want to get on a tour with them. <laughs> I've got some positive feedback for you as well. Uh, New Beginnings slash Believer are a great combo for a wee romantic light pumping with the Pirate Queen. Uh, I believe that's talking to his wife. And you're aware of what pumping means in Scotland? No, but I'm. I mean, uh... It means having sex. Right. So, uh, <laughs> <Come> on, <yes. laughs> so uh, uh, I don't know if that's necessarily the feedback you wanted. Yeah. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> but you know, if it's if it shifts a couple of units, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's go for it. Uh, looking for a romantic night in. Uh, yeah. get, get yourself some right. That's great. Yeah. The name works. The name works. Uh, so uh, what's next, though? I mean, obviously we're in lockdown. Uh, you guys aren't like, gigging yet. Um, what, well, what's the plan? You what's say the plan? That. <laughs> oh. Um, we've got this uh Sunday, we're doing a live performance at a um, uh, a visual audio visual studio in, in Tamworth near me. Brilliant. Um, it's ATC, they're called, but you can find everything on our web on our website or uh, Facebook page if you so, want to get tickets. Will, will people be able to watch that online? Yeah, yeah. You just go to our Facebook page. Um, there's a link somewhere, I think, in the bio. Uh, you go through the process, and you have to buy a ticket, unfortunately. Right. Is, uh, <laughs> and is that going to be um, a, a silly question to ask? Is, the, is that going to be um, – you can only watch it uh, – is it going to be live? Any live crowd there at all? Yeah, is it just, yeah it's, it's oh, 100% is live. So uh, full band as well, full electric, oh, so nice and, and loud. Is this going to be the first time you guys are all going to be performing in the same area for a little while? Yeah, pretty much. We've literally done uh, a couple of practices this weekend, right? Um, for this Sunday. Yeah. Because we, I think we've only we've only played live three times this year. I think or two, two or three times. Oh yeah. So yeah. this is this is it's going to be uh, probably sketchy. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be great. Are you are you looking forward to it? Yeah, it should be really good to be honest, mate. Yeah, I see, I'm I'm doing a gig this Friday as well, and it's kind of the same uh, this Saturday, and it's down, yeah. down it's down the camera from an actual comedy club, but there's going to be like I think they I think there's like seven people allowed in the building, and they're all going to be other comics, and I and I don't care, <laughs> I don't care, <laughs> I'll just be having the time of my life just to get to perform again. So yeah. um, obviously, it's a little uncertain what's going down in lockdown. What's the plan? You mentioned getting together and hopefully fingers crossed starting to put together a new album yeah so um after we do these uh this live um thing this sunday mm -hmm. we're going to get back into the uh writing process i think and brilliant start on the the demos for album three that's crazy that's great and when do you think that'll happen about the same time next year or i think we're going to push it back uh a couple of years i think because uh, we want to get this like really perfect um spot on with this album well i've I've got to say lots of people are loving that uh, people are listening which is a great idea I never actually thought about that we should have we should have suggested a playlist right at the start uh, yeah. <laughs> uh rob worthy is actually saying playing lost soul in the background my 20 year old son just came through and asked what it is he's playing it now nice. that's two awesome. generations two generations in one nice uh, good lad nice one and, mate. and uh, kenneth as well he went on to spotify and just discovered you tonight loving lost soul lots of love awesome. for the new album Lots of love for the new album. Uh, so uh, we're going to see you at the Championships in February. Yep. Uh, people can check out, obviously, you mentioned the website, and, of course, they can find you, Riders Creep online as well. Uh, yep, everywhere. A <laughs> couple of technical questions we'll get out of the way, first of all. People saying nice things about the merch as well. Uh, you can make sure to check out, again, uh, broadbeardoils.com. But what is your Broadbeard grooming uh, apparel of choice? Oh, at the moment, I'm using the, uh, I think it's the lavender one. I think I've oh, got a lot of good. Heather. Is yeah. That Heather? That's Heather, yeah, yeah. It? Yeah, yeah. I'd say. Well, I've got that many on, on the go now. I just pick and choose each day which one I want. <laughs> 
I feel I feel proper jealous though. <laughs> <laughs> We're proper jealous because I could like try. I, I, John, if you're watching, I do put a little bit on my tiny little silver. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure it looks nice. I want to make sure it looks nice. Do you, do you uh, comb it as well? <laughs> how dare you? How very dare you? Yes, yeah. I do. But only because <laughs> I say I say I comb, I comb it. I think I've been you go like this with a pen and I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but uh, um, so you've got a little selection of everything. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Much. Riders Creek, Knights of the Realm. I don't know. I think it might be pretty good. I don't know if John's watching and he's always delighted when I give him uh, ideas. Uh, maybe we can have a Riders Creed one as well. Yeah, hit us up, John. <laughs> it's going to say a suit, a suit of armor with a beard on it. I don't know if anyone's yeah. done that yet. We could. Uh, oh, that'd be cool. That'd be good. Anyway, well, you yeah. boys are welcome. I'll let you say. I'll let you work <laughs> out. Um, um, actually, I've got one question here. Uh, this is from Kenneth as well. What do you think your Favorite one is though. What's one that you keep coming back? You mentioned Heather. Mm. Have you got another couple of favorite beard oils apart from Heather? Oh, oh, I'm not too sure. To be honest, they're all really good. Yeah, it's yeah, like, it's kind of hard to pick. I, I did have a favorite, but I haven't used it because I ran out now. So uh, oh. <laughs> and I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> all right. Well, do you know something? We'll, we'll find out and we'll, we'll get you hooked up because we can't kind of have you coming to Scotland without one. Uh, yeah. Look, look, man, this has been a, an absolute blast. Lots of people discovering uh, the album as well. Don't forget, you can check out the original album and the latest one, which came out only in May. So it's brand spanking new, practically, even though we're just in July. Uh, I checked out lots of downloads uh, on Spotify, which is nice. I don't know what that means. I'm not on Spotify, but I was impressed. I was impressed by the numbers. They looked good. Uh, it probably um, means about 10p in royalties. <laughs> <laughs> probably, like probably. Yeah. Doesn't it? Uh, but if, uh, if if you were to recommend a couple of tracks from the new album, and of course they're all like your babies, they're all your favourites. Any particular one that you think would be a good one that you suggest to people check, give this to your pal. This is the one to discover is on. I think and every album is always a good one, which I call like a calling card track. Yeah, yeah. What, what's one that stands out to you? Uh, f for me, I, th I think um, "Cut Me Down." "Cut Me Down" is a good one. Yeah, "Cut yeah. Me Down" is a good one. It, it is a good one. Yeah. Um, cool. And I, I'd, I'd have to say "Believer." If if no one's heard it, just give it a listen and give a listen to the lyrics and. Yep. And, and as we found, track. and as we found out tonight, apparently it's really good to shag to. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if you want to, uh, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know if I'll partake myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I tend to put on some like Cotton Eye Joe, something yeah, really nice. nice. <laughs> it's got a rhythm to it. It's got a yeah, yeah, it. it's really a bit upbeat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, what a horrible thought. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry about it, Roger. Right, uh, I tell you what, I'm gonna do, Miles. I'm gonna pop you in the green room and uh, I'll get this wrapped up, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome. Uh, give this up for a very special guest, uh, Mr. Miles Cooper. Thank you very much, Miles. I'll touch you in just a sec, mate. Yeah. Uh, that's all we've got time for on this episode of Broadcast Children's Bag next Monday. Don't forget to check out the right for episodes, the audio episodes, and video episodes very soon. Hopefully, this week, the YouTube. And Spotify, uh, you're going to put a lot of the archive out for that as well. And every single bonus bit of content. Uh, lots of love for coming down the street at the city wall. Uh, don't forget, you can check out everything that's going on on social media uh, for Bobby. Head over to Facebook and YouTube right now to come on a brand new blog. You just uh, pop that up as well. And then look on the stuff because you've got to keep what's happening on the way. Uh, I'm Billy Kirkman. Hey, listen, uh, I'm very really glad you're on. But if you have nothing to do this Saturday night, eight something, I am going to be on the stand live too. This is going to be like your first stand up event or something. Like you can watch that wherever you are on the planet. Hey, you can stand up in the famous stand comedy club in Edinburgh. Uh, right, that's all we've got time for. I'm going to see you next Monday. And don't forget to check out by the street. They are, their album is available on iTunes. And their album is also on Spotify. Don't forget to check out the website where you can buy the physical copy. Keep supporting these guys. They're absolutely brilliant. And uh, we're going to be seeing them for the championship. All right. That was by the Street. That was by Oscar. 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 That was by Osc